Night Race bildades i Thessaloniki år 2000 av de båda gitarristerna Marius Iliopoulos och Gus G. De var fascinerade av svensk dödsmetall och i synnerhet den melodiösa stilen som kännetecknar band från just Göteborg. Band som In Flames, At The Gates och Dark Tranquility gjorde stort intryck på de båda grekerna och efter bildandet bestämde de sig för att flytta till Göteborg för gott för att försöka bli en del av det som senare skulle komma att kallas The Gothenburg Sound. Men historien börjar inte där utan tar sin början när de kommer hit för första gången med bandet Exhumation för att spela in i gamla Studio Fredman. Hej och välkomna till programmet Backstage. Jag sitter här med Marius Iliopoulos från Night Rage. Welcome to the show, dude. Thanks, man. Thank you for having me, man. Yeah, it's an honor. It's an honor and a pleasure Thanks. to have you on. Uh, I thought that we were going to start talking a little bit about how you first ended up in Sweden. Uh, did you move here first, or did you have any other sort of journey here before you came over? Uh, yeah, well, the story is that uh, I had another band in Greece uh, called Exhumation. It was a melodic death metal band, and uh, actually we, we released three albums with this band, uh, all of them produced and recorded in Sweden. Oh. So uh, I was here before, you know, the first album we recorded in 96 in uh, Orebru with uh, Dan Swano as the producer, because we were very big fans of this uh, Swedish sound. And uh, then uh, Dan introduced us to Studio Fredman, to Fredrik Nordstrom. He told us, he, if you really want to get a professional sound, you should go to Gothenburg. And uh, that's how we end up uh, recording the second album, Dance Across the Past and Traumatic on Studio Fredman. That's how I, I you know, I learn about this, uh, this Gothenburg sound, for real, you know, because uh, there was a lot of bands there recording. Uh, I met Thomas Lindberg at that time with the Exhumation Days and you know, uh, that's how it, it, it uh, began, you know, all the whole story. Because you guys were fans of, of bands from here, like In Flames and uh, At The Gates and Drug Tranquility, right? Yeah, we were uh, very big fans. I personally, I was a really big fan and I was always you know, listening to the new bands, to the new releases and uh, uh, reading a lot of magazines and uh, listening to a lot of different bands. And I was really... Uh, I like the sound a lot, you know, and uh, I thought, why not a Greek band, you know, going to a uh, in a studio in abroad and recording in a professional way? And because I, I believed in our music and our songs, I believe that we we just needed somebody to uh, guide us to get a better sound and a better, uh, you know, uh, album, making a better album in the end. And uh, that's how it happened. Mm. Yeah. So uh, how did Fredrik Nordström uh, come in and help you guys in these days? The well. Early days? Uh, he heard uh, I we sent him we sent him the first album Seas of Eternal Silence Exhumation album and uh, he really liked it and uh, he said uh, that he was really interested to work with us uh, so we I remember we recorded the second Exhumation album in Studio Fredman in the old Studio Fredman in Mayuna you know and uh, uh, also there it was the In Flames guys was at the gates uh, guys and it was really exciting for us, you know, and uh, the sound he gave us, it was amazing. I mean, uh, that was the first time for me I understand that uh, we, we have some potential in our music, you know. We just need somebody to, you know, help us a little bit. To and, bring uh, it out. Yeah. To bring it out, exactly, yeah. yeah. All right, cool, man. So moving on then into Night Rage, how, how, come, you, how come you started Night Rage? Well, the, the reason is that uh, Exhumation split up in Thessaloniki in 2000. That was really hurtful for me, you know, I felt very sad and... Uh, I just wanted to keep continue playing music, you know, and uh, then I, this idea of Night Race came to my mind. And also it happened that at the same time I met Gus, you know, and uh, he was my best friend, still is, you know. And uh, actually he, he kicked me, you know, just to, uh, to make a new band together, to play together, actually. And that's how Night Race started. It was a collaboration between me and Gus. I remember we were recording the first demo. In his house with his demo, we you know with his drum machine and stuff, and uh, it was really exciting. And then we were really happy, you know. And uh, uh, we said, okay, let's send this demo to Frederick, and see what he says. And he really liked it, you know. Gus is an exceptional uh, guitar player, you know, and uh, we had a really good chemistry. And uh, that's this, how the story started with Night Rage in Thessaloniki. And uh, then, then I felt 
if I really want to make a professional band and have a career and have more possibilities, it's better for me if I move to Gothenburg. To the source. It, 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 exactly. It felt that this is the right place uh, because I had this history with exhumation. So, yeah, it, uh, that, that, that's how it happened. And uh, then I moved to uh, Gothenburg and started starting from there, you know, and uh, building build nitrates and all that stuff, you know, recording the first album and... Cool. Where does the name Night Rage come from? Actually, this is a song from uh, from the latest Exhumation album called Night Rage. Tr the, the album calls uh, Traumaticon. Right. And uh, my idea was, let's name the band Traumaticon. Because in a way, I wanted to have a continuation between two bands. Oh, yeah. but, Gus, but it was Gus's idea. He said, no, let's, the, the, the band is going to be called Night Rage. Han kände ut så många, så många människor här då när han kom och eh, Tim, en kompis till, till Mario då, det var väl eh, honom man träffade först om man säger så och eh, grejen var att Tim var bortrest och Marios behövde exempelvis då, han behövde en lägenhet och han skulle flytta och som sagt han kände ju eh, inga människor här och då ringde Tim till mig och frågade om jag kunde hjälpa Marios och det var första gången jag träffade han. Och eh, då berättade ju Marius att han kom till Sverige enbart för musiken. Det första jag tänkte på det är ju det är en jättesvår grej där. Och det var ju väldigt vågat av han att bara åka iväg till ett annat land. Och bara för att försöka lyckas bara med musik. Det är ju en svår grej. Men eh, ja, genom åren då så har man ju förstått att han är ju en sån personlighet så att... Eh, han, han har ju lyckats och han fortsätter liksom med framgångar och framförallt då att han, han har varit och är fortfarande en stor förebild för många musiker, även kända musiker. Han har så stark vilja och väldigt målmedveten, släpper inte sin dröm och väldigt... Väldigt arbetsam, alltså han eh, kämpar ju kopiöst och arbetar väldigt hårt för att komma fram till sitt mål. Och det är ju en väldigt bra egenskap om man ska nå framgång. Eh, han är ju väldigt pålitlig, en, eh, det är ju en kille man kan lita på. Han är eh, väldigt eh, vänlig, glad, eh, alltid positiv. Ja, alltså jag, jag fattade ju på en gång när jag träffade han att han, det, det här är en speciell människa. Alltså. Eh, då lyssnade inte jag så mycket på death metal om man säger, men eh, det blev ju att jag lyssnade mer och mer och tyckte om det mer och mer givetvis. Och då gick det upp för mig hur stor musiker och hur duktig han är egentligen. Och, eh, han, han förtjänar ju att vara bland de, ja, de bästa. Jag, jag ser det så, jag vet inte. Den som lyssnar på de riffen han gör, det, då förstår man nog hur, hur stor han är. Mario är en underbar människa. Det är både som musiker och som människa själv. Väldigt, väldigt generös. Han behöver inte ha mycket för sig själv. Han bara ger till, till folk. Fast han inte har, han försöker att ge. Så på så sätt så är han väldigt speciell. Sen inom musiken, han är, ja, han är väldigt, väldigt duktig på sitt sätt att kunna förmedla mera. Och han vill inte vara en frontman. Han är, står alltid i bakgrunden, men hans idé är att förmedla och ge mera förbandet. Vissa kan ta kredit. Han har lärt upp många människor inom gitarr, inom ja, hur man skriver musik och så vidare. Och han aldrig säger något att det här är mitt eller han bryr sig inte om det. det ja, på så sätt ja, man förstår vilken stor människa han är egentligen jämfört med andra som försöker att vara det framme. Och, Ta kredit och skälla, så att säga, lite 
för att lyckas. Han har gått igenom väldigt, väldigt mycket sen allra första början på grund av musiken. Eh, jag kände Gastje som spelar för oss från början 99 och vi umgicks, jag och han. Han bodde lite hos mig, Gastje, och han hade berättat om Marius och hur mycket han avgudade honom och han sett oss spela och hans eh, ja, eh, Marius eh, sett att se på musiken, trots att folk, eh, särskilt i Grekland, när death metal är inte så populär. Och för att inte säga inte alls populär. Men han höll sig till sin dröm och har inte avvikit sedan dess. Och det är beundrasvärt. Gus G flyttade in hos Inflames grundare och gitarrist Jesper Strömblad. Eftersom jag själv på den här tiden var rumskamrat med Jesper fick jag en inblick i hur hårt den andra hälften av gitarristparet jobbade. Killen lämnade sällan köksbordet där han ständigt satt och övade på sin gitarr. Morgon till kväll, sju dagar i veckan. En disciplin som man inte delade med särskilt många andra musiker i staden och som skulle visa sig avgörande. 2009 ersatte Gus G nämligen Zach Wilde som gitarrist i Ossie Osborns band. What was the lineup for the first album when you started recording that? Uh, yeah, that was uh, one of the biggest problems that I faced because uh, when I came here in Sweden, you know, I was alone. Uh, I didn't have so much money and all that stuff. I, did, uh, I only knew Frederick. That's what, that was the reason for me being here because I knew that he can help me with the uh, nitrates uh, thing. Uh, and then uh, it was Gas, it was me, but uh, we were alone and we were looking for a drummer and a bass player and a singer actually. And uh, maybe this is luck, this is by luck, or, but I met Thomas Lindbergh on the Thomas street. Thomas Lindbergh from, uh, from at the gates. gates. Yeah, I yeah, met yeah. him on the street and uh, I told him about uh, that I moved here now. And uh, I have a demo tape if you want to listen to it. And uh, I, gave it th I gave the demo to Thomas and uh, he told me that he really liked the uh, songs. But then uh, we kind of lost contact after that incident. And then I moved on, you know, and uh, I talked to Frederick. Frederick wanted to help us and he gave us actually the chance to record the first album Sweet Vengeance for free in Studio Fredman. Wow. Yeah, because he, re he really liked Gas and he really liked me and the songs that we were uh, made. And uh, I remember we were recording the first the guitars because we didn't have a drummer also. And then we needed to have a drummer and a singer in the album. And uh, then I called, I, I remember I called Thomas and I said, we're in Studio Fredman recording the album now. Do you want to come and listen? That's how it happened. He came to the studio, listened to the songs, and he was really interested to be a part of the uh, album as well. And it happened at the, at the same time when we were recording the guitars in Fredman's studio, it was the Haunted recording their album. I think That's it was well. a One Kill Wonder album. Oh, wow, yeah. Yeah, at the Great same album. time. And uh, the drums were set up and everything. And Freddie had a, has the idea like, why don't you put Per Moller Jensen playing the drums? He's here, the drums are set up, you know, yeah. he, he can learn the songs. and. That's how he also he ended up uh, being on the album. And he was at the time the haunted drummer. Exactly, oh, exactly. Cool. Uh, you know, he, he's a professional drummer. He's an amazing drummer, and uh, he listened to the songs. And he came after three days, and he recorded the album. All right. That's amazing for me. It was like a amazing big honor. Amazing timing, isn't it? It is. It wow. was really a big honor for me to yeah. have all those guys in in my album. You know, I never thought about it. It was like a dream come true. You know, mm -hmm. one of the things that you never think about it, but it, it just happens. You know. So, do you have any cool stories about the recording of Sweet Vengeance? Like, well, how's was Frederick to work with? He's a he's an amazing guy. You know, he's one of my uh, he's a friend, or very good friend of me, and uh, he loves nitrates. And um, he he's a, a very fun guy to work with. You know, but uh, at the same time, recording this album was kind of difficult because, like I said, he gave us. Uh, studio time for free in the studio, but we always recorded in the night times when nobody else was in the studio. Mm. So that took a long time. It was a little a pain, in, a painful thing, you know, to record. Like it took us like five uh, months to uh, end up with the album, you know, finish the, mm. the actual album. And um, then, uh, you know, Frederick uh, sent it to some record labels like uh, Century Media, Nuclear Blast, and Metal Blade, I, I remember. And uh, it was Central Media uh, right, right there, you know, very interested to 
sang mm. the band because they loved the songs and of course they were big fans of uh, Lindbergh, you know. Yeah. Uh, but they love the songs, the music. Uh, that was the main reason to, for us to be signed mm. with the Central Media. Cool, cool. Uh, during this time when you, were, when you were working in the studio at night, how, how did you support yourself? How did you pay your rent? <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, that's one of the hardships wh what, uh, that it comes with all these things. You know, like I had to work in, uh, in, a, in shit jobs, you know, like uh, wash dishes, you know to support myself like i said when i came to sweden i didn't have any money i didn't have any home to stay you know and it was really difficult but i never uh, i never let down the dream my 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 main dream was to make this album to record this album and i was working for it and i didn't care if i have to go through uh, you know tough times and i knew that actually i knew that before i moved here so and uh, I, I, I try to keep my main focus in the music, and uh, I'm, I'm very happy that I, I manage, you know, I, you know I, we, record, we record in the end this album, you know, and uh, things took its own ways. Second album. The second What's album. What's that called? Uh, it's uh, the name of the album is Descend into Chaos, and uh, on this one we kept the same uh, songwriting lineup, like uh, me, Thomas, and Gas G. Yeah. And uh, I think it's a great follow-up to the first album because with the first album we got very rave reviews. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, we got a lot of fans interested in the band, and it was a uh, kind of difficult to come up with a. A better album, the, or the, the hard same. second it, album. It was it? Uh, it was really difficult, but yeah. I think we managed because we we just kept the intensity. You know, we didn't sell out. You know, we ju we even uh, record even faster songs, more thrashy. You know, more death metal kind of songs, and that felt right at mm. the time. And uh, I'm very proud of this album as well. You know, uh, I wanted to say like on the first album we had also Tom S. Englund yeah. from Evergrey doing some. Uh, uh, clean vocals and on the Century Chaos album uh, we had Mikael Stane from Dark Tranquility also guesting some uh, oh, wow. uh, clean vocals in uh, one song. Top quality guys. That. Yeah but for me uh, like I said I was a fan. Mm. I was just a fan you know just happened to play guitar and you know and for me what well, was a really big thing meant a lot to me you know mm. like having all those guys in my band and uh, and they really appreciate the Night Rage music that's that's a big thing I think. Um, and Frederick was producing this album as well? Oh, of yes, uh, it was uh, Frederick and uh, Patrick uh, Giestin, the drummer of Dream Evil now, oh nowadays. Right, yeah. he, w he did a lot of job in this album as well. He actually produced the album and with uh, the help of Frederick mm -hmm. on uh, Descend into, into Chaos album. Cool. And did you tour a lot this time? Uh, well, that's the thing. We, because of this uh, lineup problem, you know, like we didn't have a real lineup. All the, like I said, all those guys was uh, they they helping us, you know. They they were kind of session guys. Uh, we didn't tour a lot in the first album. I think we did only two shows. One show in uh, Go uh, Gothenburg's uh, Jeteboris Kalaset yeah. on this festival in 2003. And uh, then I really wanted to make a real lineup. And that's what happened in the third album, A New Disease is Born. <laughs> On this one, we changed studio also. We went to Denmark and- Yeah, uh, you did, didn't you? Yeah, when they recorded in Jacob Hansen's studio, one of the he's one of the you know big names yeah, right yeah, now yeah. in the record recording industry, you know, and uh, he's an amazing guy, amazing producer. He used to play in this amazing band, fresh band from Denmark, Invocator. 
he's, oh, he yeah, was the yeah, guitar yeah. player Brilliant and a singer. And now he's a successful uh, rec recording engineer. Oh, still to this day? Yeah, and producer also. Oh, cool. and, uh, I'm really happy with this album. It was a little bit of a different it's album. It's a bit more experimental, isn't it? I can say it was uh, it was still nitrates, but has a little bit of, uh, modern elements in it, and uh, which is not bad, you know. But uh, I think it's uh, the nitrates intensity and the nitrates melodies and everything is there, and uh, I'm still proud of this album. And I think Jacob gave us a little bit of a different sound, you know. Uh, of course, it, it's it's uh, it's working like that when you work with somebody else, and uh, that's what we wanted to get somewhere else, but still keeping the nitrate spirit, if you like. Then on the fourth album, the lineup changed again, and you now the the lineup that you're currently playing with. Exactly. Anders Hammer and yeah, Anders, we John have Anders Nunes. Hammer on bass, we have Joe Nunes on uh, drums, Anthony Hammerleinen is yeah. uh, the vocalist in the band. Lives in America, right? Uh, he lives in America. He's uh, actually a Finnish guy. Yeah. Uh, quite a story, you know, and uh, he lives in uh, Arizona, Phoenix, mm -hmm. and he's been raised by a Cypriot Greek father, you know. It's wow. qu quite a story, but uh, yeah, I think he's an amazing singer. And for me, I, I think Anthony is uh, uh, following the uh, the way, that, like how Thomas Lindbergh sings. For me, he's like the cousin of Thomas mm -hmm. Lindbergh, mm -hmm. something mm -hmm. like that. And uh, I like that because I think this this sound is really fit, fit nitrates. This kind of vocals, and uh, he does he does a really good job. You know? He does. He does. How did how, how did he join the band? Uh, that was uh, through the magic of MySpace, you know, back in the, the day. The magic when, of MySpace. Yes, <laughs> when, when MySpace was big, you know. Yeah. Uh, he just sent me an email and uh, asked me, like, he heard, I think, from somewhere that we're looking for a, we're looking for a singer. And uh, he asked me, guys, uh, I will be really interested to help, you know, to be the, your ne next singer and something. And uh, so I said, uh, yeah, send me your demos. And he sounded good. But I wanted to meet the guy in real, you know. So I said, if you, if you're serious about it, just come to Sweden and let's audition it and play some. And he did. He did. He did. Oh. I was a big thing like that's I, dedication, isn't it? It is, and I didn't expect it to be honest no. because it's a it's a big trip, it's a big distance, and but uh, he, the guy show up. It was really he was a big Nitrates fan, mm. actually, and uh, he did a really really good job on the studio, and uh, that's how he ended up in the band. And Anders, you're an amazing uh, bass player. How, yeah. did he, how did he join? He's because uh, he's from Gothenburg. He's right? from he's a guy from Gothenburg, yeah. and um, actually he was a really big fan of the band as well. And uh, a good, very good bass player, mm. very dedicated, uh, never let us down. He always being there for the shows and everything. And handsome uh, fella. Yeah, he's, <laughs> a, he's a big heart guy, you know, yeah, big hearted guy. You yeah. know, so I, we had a good time, you know, yeah. always. And Joe? Joe, actually, uh, I, remem I remember we put an uh, ad on our Facebook page. Like, like we said, we're looking for a new drummer and uh, all that stuff. And he uh, immediately sent me an email and uh, he knew about the band. And uh, I, I asked him to, you know, to make some videos, mm. some uh, playing. And um, he, looked, I, he looked very you know, professional and stuff. So then I asked him as well, can you come to Sweden and we can audition and stuff. And, uh, and he was really, really, really good, you know. Mm. Uh, you know, he, he was a kid when I uh, when he came here, like he was 19 years old. But he, oh, wow. you, you could see that this guy has a lot of potential, you know. He was, uh, was an amazing drummer yeah, yeah. right there, you know. And uh, that's how I met Joe as well. Cool. Man. You and Anthony write lyrics together now, don't you? Exactly. Uh, we have a really good team, yeah. you know. Be because back in the day, I was writing the lyrics myself. And uh, but uh, I can tell you that we have the kind same of mind with mm. Anthony. So uh, when I say something to him, he coming back to me with another idea, and uh, we write the lyrics on the last two albums, where in Mars Crown and Insidious we write together, and it's a great uh, team, I think. Mm. Yeah. Uh, what well, speaking of lyrics, uh, what are the lyrics mostly about? What what subjects do you do you usually cover? Is it all about flames and death? Mm, and uh, or, not or really. Do you go a bit. You go a bit different, don't you? I think so. Yeah, we are. And uh, 
uh, we're trying to write about, uh, you know, human relations and uh, real stuff, you know, like uh, uh, stories that we got influenced by in our lives. We, we got influenced by that and we write about it, about it you know, like uh, stories that can happen to everybody, you know. And I think it really makes, us, makes sense because it fits with the kind of music we play. Mm. I don't think with this kind of music we play that other kind of lyrics would fit. I think uh, there must be real, you know, not mm. some fantasy stories or stuff like that. I found the ways of madness breaking my heart. I held my head up high where I am crying. So let's move on to the fifth album, the latest one called uh, Insidious, right? Yeah, that's the latest album uh, that been released in uh, 2011, September 2011, I remember. And uh, I think this album contains all the different elements of what Nitrates is all about. I yeah. mean, it's it's melodic, it's heavy, uh, has some clean vocals here and there. And uh, we, ha we were lucky enough on this one to have a lot of guests, a lot of uh, friends from uh, the old times. It's uh, Thomas Lindbergh and Gas G and uh, Tom S. Englund. Mm. It's also Apollo uh, Papathanasio from Firewind doing some clean vocals. Uh, I have also my two Greek friends, George Bacharidis. He's doing some, uh, you know, uh, stuff with uh, the keyboards and uh, uh, John Kutalinis is an amazing singer as well. He helped us with some uh, string arrangements. Mm. So it's it, it was like a, you know we we had I think we had a good songs on this one, but we just wanted to have a li an extra fla flavor if mm. you want, you know. And uh, that's why we asked all those uh, friends to help us a bit and uh, putting their own kind of uh, magic in there you know, right. on the album. It's beautiful. That's cool. Uh, and that, what, what was that? Where was that recorded? Uh, that one actually, we changed studio. We recorded in Greece, in Athens. Yeah. And a good friend of ours, uh, Terry Nikas, yeah. that's his name, and he has these studios called uh, Zero Gravity Studios. So we recorded every, everything there: uh, drums, guitars, and bass. But uh, then Anthony has to record in Phoenix, Arizona, with his friend Ryan Butler, in Arcane Digital Studios. And then uh, we took all files when it was ready and uh, we go again, you know, as usual to Studio Fredman, to our friend Frederick Nordstrom and Henrik uh, Ud, and they mix and master the album. Lovely. That was a good deal. <laughs> yeah, so, so, that must have been great. You know, all of those people and I'm bringing it together with the uh, with the guy who puts the Gothenburg spice on top. Exactly. It was, a, and also for us was a kind of different way to record an yeah. album rather than go to everybody going to the same studio and doing the album there so everybody you know we took another approach on this one Frederick told me that when people ask him about the Gothenburg sound, uh, like well, who's, who's representing it and blah, 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 he, he said that he doesn't really mention the old Inflames and At The Gates, <laughs> but he says he mentioned you. And it feels like the city has sort of embraced you now as part of, as part of this sound and one of the innovators and, and people who's taken it into, into the future. How, that is pretty big, isn't it, from a guy from Thessaloniki, you know? <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, that, well, I'm honored, actually by that and uh, I feel like uh, with our kind of work because uh, Frederick knew how focused I am in playing the music and how much I wanted to play the music and uh, uh, w it's also the fact that we, we, we kept the same sound yeah. you know we never changed to something else 
uh, whether this is uh, you know uh, something else that sells or people listen more we, we didn't uh, we didn't uh, commercialize our sound you know if you want uh, we stayed true to this Gothenburg sound uh, spirit yeah. and that's why I think Frederick mentioned uh, the guy from Thessaloniki and yeah, uh, listen to nitrates because he feels like we kept the same spirit we never changed we never look uh, right or left you know we just wanted to be the best band we can be and playing the music we love mm -hmm. and comes from the heart you know so we will never see you and your band on all song post I don't think so <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it's gonna work for me you know? I don't think it works for anybody to <laughs> no. be honest You went to Korea this year. Uh, didn't yeah, you? we we were lucky enough to invited. They invite us to South Korea in August, last August, and uh, I, I could see that we have fans there as well. I didn't know, you know, because when I got the first email, honestly, I didn't know what to expect. You know, you're going to a place that is so far, and uh, you don't know. Maybe you're going there. There's only five people, but it was actually a lot of people and really interested and they knew about nitrates, yeah. knew the music, knew the lyrics. They wanted to talk to us and we, you know, we, it was a big thing, man, you know. Sometimes you don't take, take these things for granted, but they happen, you know. And I'm very happy about it. I mean, I'm very happy that our music can touch other people in the world, you know, and uh, they, they like it and they love, they love us in the end, you know. Yeah, man, cool. I'm very happy about it. Metal's universal, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Transcends all borders. Uh, last week you played at a really interesting festival here in town, didn't you? Yeah. Uh, the we, Gothenburg Sound Festival. The Gothenburg Sound Festival. Uh, they asked us to be a part of this festival. And for me, uh, once again, uh, that's a big honor, you know, to be a part of this sound and this festival. And um, we, we also, because our singer couldn't make the, uh, the show, um, he couldn't be on the show. He, we asked Thomas Lindbergh to help us uh, just play one off, one off show, and uh, he did. So we play songs from the last, from the actually first two albums, mm. and uh, it was a great show, man. I, I enjoyed, it and uh, uh, we, we try to give our best and uh, hope that more shows like that coming up for us. <laughs>
It was at that show, and it was amazing. I can tell you, man, it was it was awesome. Thanks, man. The best band at that at that festival. <laughs> Even though everyone was great, ceremonial oath coming back together, yeah, a lot of good bands. It was. Uh, I think this festival is like an appetizer for these guys because they they want to make it. Uh, they want to they want to put this festival every year. So it was like a test for them, like how it's gonna work and stuff. And I think it was a good turnout for every band. Good bands, good uh, um, professional people, uh, good fans. Ev everything was good. So I'm looking forward to the next one. Yeah, man. Yes. So what's next? What's next for 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 you and, and Night Rage in the in the uh, coming year? Uh, for the time being, um, uh, I'm composing a lot of uh, riffs and uh, start to write, write some lyrics for the next album. Uh, may maybe this will going to take a while, I don't know, because uh, I we don't have a label right now, you know, we're out of Life Force Records and uh, we're still negotiating with them another deal and there's some other labels interested in the band, but uh, I think we need to write songs first, you know, we need to feel a bit inspired and again, take, time. take a little bit of time, don't rush it, don't mm. force it and uh, we'll see what happens, you know, I'm, but I'm very, I, I see the thing very optimistic, I think it's going to be... It's gonna take its time probably, but it's gonna you know, be a good album in the end because I I feel kind of inspired just to write music right now, you know, yeah. and uh, riffs and stuff like that. So we'll see what happens with that. Cool, man. I'm looking forward to that album. Thank you for being on my show, Thank man. Thank you, man. Thanks Thank for coming you. Appreciate down. it. Thanks. Nice one. Thanks. Thanks a lot.